I, I think that as, as marijuana is being legalized in more states, there's going to be more opportunity for the public to be unintentionally exposed to marijuana secondhand smoke. The, actually, many of the chemicals are the same. So other than the nicotine in tobacco and the THC, the psychoactive drug in marijuana, these smokes, they've been chemically analyzed and the thousands of chemicals that are in smoke are really in, in both of them. And so you can think of any dried plant material combustion products in the same way. And so that was the point of this study, is that uh, people already know in general to, to avoid being exposed to tobacco, cigarette, secondhand smoke. But a lot of those people don't necessarily feel the same way about marijuana because they, they think it's, it's okay for them, it's, it's, it's natural, it's medicine, it doesn't have the nicotine, and they, they don't realize that nicotine is not the only toxin. Um, and most importantly, we're not telling them, you know, the, the people that tell them to avoid cigarette secondhand smoke don't tell them to avoid marijuana secondhand smoke. If you're smoking the marijuana, then you're doing that intentionally. You know it. I think this is more concerned with the bystanders, the people who are, are not intentionally smoking marijuana. And so people who are at a party where people are smoking a lot of marijuana, but they're not smoking, they're still getting the smoke. And in fact, as, as marijuana is increasingly legalized, you're gonna see more opportunities for people just on a street corner being exposed to the smoke. And so one of the, the policy implications of this is that it, when governments or, or local city councils, et cetera, when they put in place restrictions on where people can smoke in public, um, trying to protect the general public from secondhand smoke, they need to write those widely enough to encompass other sources of smoke, such as the marijuana. We, we exposed rats to marijuana secondhand smoke generated from a smoking machine, the same kind that we use for tobacco secondhand smoke. And so upon exposure to 30 minutes of secondhand smoke, and it was done under a way in which most of the exposure took place in the first 10 minutes, the, the levels fell off during the exposure. But technically it was a 30 minute exposure period. And after that exposure period, FMD had gone down. So we measured FMD before, got a good, good value, you know, exposed for half an hour, measured FMD about 10 minutes later, because it takes a few minutes to get the rat from one system to another. So 10 minutes after the end of exposure, FMD was severely impaired. Um, we came back half an hour after that and measured vascular function again. And I should mention that in the case of tobacco experiments, usually FMD has, has improved half an hour later. In our marijuana experiments, it didn't. It was still low. A lot is known about the ambient levels of tobacco secondhand smoke in various social situations. Very little, if anything, is known about ambient marijuana levels. So all we could really do was to take the, the tobacco secondhand smoke conditions and mimic them in, in marijuana smoke. We also did this study with marijuana in which THC had been removed. So we've got regular marijuana and we have THC depleted marijuana. They were the same. They, they both had this effect. And so I think it's important to emphasize that what we're looking at is the effects not of marijuana the drug, but of marijuana the smoke. And so if people are using other forms of marijuana, edibles, um, extracts, things like that, these results are not necessarily relevant to them.